Welcome to iLector Online. This video here is a reshoot of a video we did earlier. We published it, then we realized, well, even though the final answer was correct, I don't think I solved it correctly. And the reason for that was that I took a quick look at this denominator, and I thought that the, there was no way that denominator could be zero. In other words, there was no real solution when we took the denominator and said equal to zero to see if there were any real roots. Turns out, there are two real roots, and therefore it's possible for the denominator to become zero for specific values of x. So, we had to take another approach, or I should have taken another approach. So, the concept is we need to find the asymptotes. We have vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes. To find the vertical asymptotes, you find all the values of x that make the denominator zero, which in this case there will be two of those. And then to find the horizontal asymptotes, you find all the values for y when x approaches infinity or x approaches negative infinity. In this case, you'll get the same value for y. But that's how you want to approach it. So first, what we're going to do is look for the zero denominator. To do that, we're going to solve for the denominator by setting it equal to zero. So we get 0x squared minus 7x plus 2 equal to 0, and we solve this quadratic equation. We use a quadratic formula, so we say x equals the negative of the middle term, which is 7, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. And yes, indeed, that this will be greater than 0. We divide all that by twice a, which is 2 times 6. All right, this becomes equal to 7 plus or minus the square root of 49 minus 48 divided by 12, which is 7 plus or minus the square root of 1 divided by 12, which is equal to 7 plus or minus 1 divided by 12. And so that gives us two possible values for x. x is equal to, when we add them together, that would be 8 over 12, which is three, uh, not 3 over 4, but 2 over 3. Or, when we subtract 7 minus 1, which is 6, so x equals 6 over 12, which is 1 half. So there's two values for x that make the denominator equal to 0, when x equals 2 thirds and when x equals 1 half. So when we then draw the graph over here, here we have the y-axis, we have the x-axis, so for x equals 1 half, right here, that would be an asymptote, x equals to 1 half, and for x equals 2 thirds. Now notice I'm exaggerating the distance from the origin for 1 half and, and uh, 2 thirds to make it easier to graph, so x equals 2 thirds. So those two lines represent two asymptotes. We know that the graph will not cross those two asymptotes. That's impossible because we can never have a zero denominator. Now what we're going to do is we find the horizontal asymptotes by setting x to a very large value, let it approach infinity. So when we take our equation, y equals x squared divided by 6x squared minus 7x plus 2, if we let x become really large, then the minus 7x and the plus 2 become insignificant. And we only have to worry about this part of the equation. So as x approaches infinity, then this becomes y equals x squared divided by 6x squared. And then, of course, we have x squared divided by x squared becomes 1, as long as we don't let x become infinity. But we let it get really, really large, closer and closer to infinity, then this essentially becomes 1 over 6. Since x is squared both in the numerator and the denominator, we can say that as x becomes negative infinity, we get the very same result because a very big number that's negative squared gives you the same positive value. So we know that we're going to have another asymptote, horizontal asymptote at this point, at y equals 1 sixth. So we'll go ahead and we draw another asymptote right here, and we go y equals 1 over 6. So this gives us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 regions on the graph that could potentially have part of the graph in it. So now, to get a feel for it, we can plug in some values. For example, what happens when x becomes 0? So y, when x equals 0, is equal to 
0 divided by positive 2, which is 0. All right, so when x equals 0, y equals 0. So that means we have a point on the graph that's there, which is in this region of the graph that's bounded by those two asymptotes. So that means that the only way we can draw a graph that goes to that point and doesn't cross those two asymptotes is something that kind of looks like this. All right, so let's pick a point up in here. So we know that x must be bigger than 1, y bigger than 1. So let's try the point, uh, let's go y when x equals 1 and see what happens. So then in the numerator we get 1 squared divided by 6 times 1 minus 7 plus 2. And notice that is 1 divided by 1, which is 1. Let me draw a line there so we don't get confused. Which means that when x equals 1, y equals 1, which is the point right about there. There's the point 1, 1. And again, the only way you can draw a graph through here and not cross these two asymptotes is something that looks like this. Now, the only other thing we need to do is find out if the graph exists in either one of these two places right here. So in other words, we might have something that looks like this, or we might have something that looks like that. That's the only way you can have a graph in there that doesn't cross these two asymptotes and the third asymptote right there. All right. So we need to pick a value for x in between these two, between one half and two thirds. So let's try a graph that's, uh, let's say x equals 0.6. So y when x equals 0 0.6 is equal to, in the numerator we get 0.6 squared divided by 6 times 0 0.6 squared minus 7 times 0 0.6 and plus 2. So let's see what that's equal to. So in the denominator we get 0.6 squared times 6 minus 7 times 0.6 and plus 2 equals, well, let's just write down the result, the intermediate result. So in the numerator we get 0.36, in the denominator we get minus 0 0.04. Okay, take that to the numerator and times 0.36, that gives us minus 9. So, meaning that if we pick a point for x between 1 half and 2 thirds, the y value is minus 9, which is down here somewhere. So that means we need to have something that looks like this to conclude the whole graph. And we can't have anything up there because that would give us like a positive value. All right. That gives us a feel of what that graph looks like. Now we can determine what the range is. The range is all the possible values for y. And notice y can go to negative infinity here, all the way up to positive 1 sixth over here. Over here, y can go all the way to infinity this way and comes down here and goes down to 1 sixth, but it cannot equal 1 sixth. So essentially, the solution is that y can be all values except for 1 6. So in other words, we can say that y is equal to all the values for y. It's an element of all the real values. In other words, y can have all values in the real number system except for y is not equal to 1 over 6. And that's one way to write it. Or you could simply say all values such that y is not equal to 1 6. So either way of writing it, the fancy way or the simple way, the range for y can be all values except for y equals 1 sixth, and that is how it's done. Correctly this time.